The Houghton Provincial Government, led by Premier Panyazali Sufi, today launched a multi-stakeholder program aimed at rejuvenating the Johannesburg Central Business District. This initiative will focus on enhancing lighting, security and cleanliness within the CBD with the aim of improving the condition of Johannesburg and other CBDs across the province to attract investment. Hi, Sue Dumelang, a very good evening. My name is Tabo Malukwana. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we take a look at the Johannesburg CBD campaign launched at the Johannesburg City Hall earlier today. Now, Premier Panyazali Sufi highlighted that the revitalization of CBDs is a key component of the old CBD revitalization strategy and implementation framework in his inaugural address for the seventh administration of Houteng. Now, Premier Li Sufi kicked off by saying the campaign is ambitious and risky, but very necessary. Let's take a look at what he had to say further. Today we are starting an ambitious program. Very risky, but it must be done. Today we are starting those baby steps as we committed in our state of the province address that the Johannesburg CBD is an embarrassment for all of us, but it can be a happy point for all of us. That is an eyesore, it's an area that we have lost control completely, that there's an urgent need not only to reclaim it, but to direct it. It can be on autopilot and it can be at the wheel of criminals where this beautiful city should go or should be attended. Today, we don't want to point fingers on why we are here. We don't want to point fingers who dropped the ball. We want to collectively hold our hands to say this is our city, we'll reclaim it, we'll control it, we'll direct it, we'll invest in it. And I want to declare that what we are going to do in this particular city, we are not going to do it with, do it with deeds. The time has arrived that we just stop talking and we do what is expected out of us. There will be no resource limitation, Executive Mayor and MEC. There will be no resource limitation. Whatever it takes, whatever resources that are needed, we must reclaim this particular city. And we're not going to reclaim it when we are alone. We must reclaim it. We must reclaim it with everyone. There will be those that will be cynics. There will be those that will criticize us. There will be those that will insult us. There will be those that will throw stones at us. The stones that are throwing at us, we will use them to build the cornerstone that will stand up in this thing. The insults that they are going to throw at us, the insults that they are going to throw at us, we will throw soap to clean those insults. And the anger that they will express on us, we will throw roses to show love and commitment to reclaim this particular city. From poisons up until down to GP, we are deploying not less than 4,800 law enforcement agencies that will start to be patrolling 24 hours, day and night, from today. Because that's what we need to reclaim. You can bring investment here. If people are going to be marked, if people are going to be robbed, if people are going to be attacked, those investments will come to naught. Law enforcement must be here, it must be visible. And we are starting with one important street called Small Street we will liberate small street. No criminal activity will take place in that particular small street. Already we have put cameras there. Already we have put uh, home bodies there. We have people in uniform and not in uniform patrolling that particular area. We are liberating this particular city from now on, ensure, ensuring that we have a city that is very safe. And that is why we are calling for the Johannesburg Revitalization Summit, where we are bringing lawyers, developers, we are bringing people that want to take uh, investment in our city, we want to bring civil organization, we want to bring everyone. Our approach is very simple. Where peace is needed, we'll provide peace. 
but where resistant, that is unreasonable, where resistant, that is meaningless, is presented to us, will resist in return. We are government, we are in charge, and no one must tell us when we enter this particular space and deal with the issues. So our approach is very simple. We'll provide love where love is needed. We'll provide peace where peace is needed. But there must be no one, when we are claiming what belongs to us, that believe they can stand in front of us, either to bully us or try to stop us to do what we have. This is our city. Our parents came here to buy top shires and Brentwood. This is our city. Some of us are human beings because our parents met in this city and they fell in love. This is our city. Many things happened because this particular city was established. And we are not fighting for the revitalization of this city for nostalgic reasons. We are fighting for the revitalization for this particular city because of its strategic economic placement of this particular city. And therefore, we are coming to claim what is something that we can be proud of. So as government, we are starting. As Gauteng government, the Carlton Centre Hotel that was abandoned, we are reclaiming it, we are changing it into apartments so that people that need housing can have that particular a hotel back and deal with it. We are led by our Department of Human Settlement. Hauteng Premier Panyadali Sufi there highlighting that it's not a moment to point fingers but uh, rather to dig uh, our heels in, do the work and reclaim the city of Johannesburg when he also says that they cannot do it alone but with the help of everyone. Key to note there is uh, Premier Lisufi saying that uh, from Boysens to GP, 4,800 law enforcement agencies will be deployed to patrol for 24 hours in order to increase visibility as a means to increase safety. I mean, he now speaks on the cleanliness in the city and the role of Pick It Up going forward. Let's take a look. You are seeing these women and men that are here in green. There must be no paper that is not picked and rubbish that is not picked. We are releasing you today to go and assist us to clean this particular city and pick it up even though I was criticized when I said to the executive council, we want pick it up executive mayor to be our agency to clean the city. They said, but it's a mandate of pick it up. We said, yes, it might be their mandate. Maybe they need extra capacity. And that's the extra capacity that we are bringing to pick it up so that they can have additional cars additional resources, additional machines, so that everything that is called debt in this particular city must be removed. And must be removed during the day, MEC, it must be removed at night, it must be removed at all times. Because if we can't turn this city to be clean, there's no way that people will take us serious that indeed we want to turn around this particular city. And we believe we can do this thing all we need is commitment from the private sector, government, and the residents of the inner city themselves, because we need to start teaching the residents that the behavior must change. We cannot litter as, as and where we want to. In fact, as I was driving this morning, I was shocked that even businesses contribute towards littering. I mean, rubbish is all over next to their doors which suggests that they themselves as business owners are not taking responsibility of their spaces. So we must also talk to business owners and property owners to take care of their spaces. Thank you very much. Johannesburg Mayor there, Dada Morero, echoing the sentiments of Gauteng Premier Panyazali Sufi as they highlight the importance of cleanliness in the city and imploring residents to also get involved. Now, Premier Panyazali Sufi also spoke on bringing extra capacity to support Pick It Up in order to have a cleaner city that is more attractive and lucrative to investors. On that note, we're going to take a quick short ad break. When we come back, we continue with the special edition of Soweto Today. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching the special edition of Soweto Today. Much appreciated for joining us. Now in tonight's special edition of the show, we spotlight the Johannesburg CBD campaign launched by the Harting Provincial Government this morning. Now before the ad break, we heard from Harting Premier Panyazali Sufi 
as well as the Johannesburg Mayor, Dada Morero, as they let us know about the purpose of the initiative and highlighted uh, various key issues of importance, including the cleanliness of the city. Now we continue to spotlight the initiative and take a look at the importance of collaboration and partnerships between private and public sectors in order to make the city more livable, as well as the importance of developing more entrepreneurs. Here's Joburg Mayor Dada Morero expanding more on this idea. We are now declaring war on lawlessness in the city and in the next few days and weeks we will be embarking on an extensive drive, a drive to create a city that is livable, vibrant and safer. And we will be doing this by bringing through the, develop, the district development model, partnerships between the city of Johannesburg and its entities, the provincial government, and of course, at some point, would we'll bring the private sector and the national government, so that all of us together, we can confront this and create a better city. And our goal is to drive a program of revitalization to ensure that businesses once again can strive in the inner city of Johannesburg. Uh, we will ensure that this city becomes livable once again and we can attract as many people as possible, especially young people uh, in business, in corporate South Africa that can come and live and enjoy being the residents of the inner city of Johannesburg. And we also need to ensure that as we do this work, we also develop entrepreneurs and SMMEs that will ensure that we can promote entrepreneurship in the city of Johannesburg. We want to work with you. We want to capacitate you. We want to ensure that we learn from your experiences. But we are also bringing extra capacity from JMPD, SAPS, ourselves as the province, and whoever that is willing to bring extra capacity in this particular city, we want to work with you. So our message is very simple. We are starting a difficult task, but this task is doable. We are starting a risky task, but this risk can be mitigated. We are starting a very ambitious program, but resources are available to ensure that this ambition is realized. We are starting a very important mission on behalf of all South Africans. We can't compete with your Paris, your New York, with this kind of a city. We must compete with those with a beautiful city. Today, we are starting that. Josie that we live in, Josie that we'll shop in, Josie that we'll play in, the Josie that will make all of us proud. Josie, the real Josie, rise. We are here to assist you. To rise. The city of Johannesburg and Patek province is to work together in real, true sense of collaboration to bring hope back to the residents of our city, to inspire people to re-love, re-imagine and re-experience our beautiful city. We are really proud of the fact that we get so much support from Gauteng province and from the city of Joburg to really make a difference in terms of safety and security, working with the social issues that we are experiencing in the city. Um, there's a number of initiatives in terms of arts and culture, beautification in our city. But um, for us to make a real difference and to, br and to bring hope and change back to the city, we have to work together and we're really proud and privileged to say that this partnership is going to make a real difference in people's lives. We need to address um, creating jobs for our young people for the next generation. We must create commercial spaces and revitalize those that are already existing. And of course at the core is to create a safe environment uh, in the city of Johannesburg. Now, Program Director, I think that today is an important day, not only for government, but for the people of this great city and this great province. Gauteng alone, or Johannesburg alone, at least attracts about 18,000 people on a monthly basis who come and settle in Johannesburg. 
and some of them don't even know where they are going to stay, where they are going to sleep, and when, when is their next meal coming from. So Johannesburg presents a bigger challenge for all of us to, pre to respond. And as government, we must create an environment in which people must feel safe and must see Johannesburg as a place to be. Johannesburg Mayor there, Dada Marrero, speaking on the importance of creating more commercial spaces and revitalization of uh, those that already exist and you know, ensuring that a safe environment is created in Johannesburg CBD. We also heard from uh, B.S. Swanepoel, the CEO of Josie My Josie, also having come through there, highlighting the importance of collaboration in addressing current social issues including safety, job creation and more. We continue spotlighting the Johannesburg CBD campaign after the ad break on this special edition of Soweto Today. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. We are approaching the end of the show and we've been spotlighting the Johannesburg CBD campaign which was launched by the Houghton Provincial Government this morning in the heart of the Johannesburg CBD. We have heard from various stakeholders, including Houghton Premier Panyazali Sufi, Mayor Dada Morero from the city of Johannesburg, and Josie Mai Josie, CEO Bia Swanepoel. There. As we wrap up, uh, we take a look at the sentiments from other key figures who were in attendance at the launch. Mteni Chwaku, the MMC for Public Safety, was in attendance and welcomed the campaign, saying it was long overdue. He also highlighted that uh, politics should be set aside for the purpose of working together in enhancing the city of Johannesburg. This is a much, actually it's a long overdue. You remember last year when I, when I came in as the Minister for Public Safety, we did something like that. Uh, it was under Operation Manjinam Tlanje. It was a cleaning campaign and also it was the crime you know combating and, and, and the prevention so this uh, cbd revitalization uh, in partnership with the province and the stakeholders is much welcome that's what we actually want and i like it the fact that we're saying that let us put the political differences aside whether you're coming from any political party the nc eff uh, any any partners uh, in, in this uh, government let us now work together for service to deliver so it is much welcome because remember when you're fighting crime you must ensure that you know the the, 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 the this whole place is clean you know because um, because uh, you know the the thugs when it's when it's dirty it's likely that you know it's it's all to disorganize yeah. and then also i've been saying uh, to to my colleague mmc Jack Squile, that you need light luminescence actually in many areas in, in, in the cbd because when the when it's dark criminality actually strive so we welcome the integration of the province the stakeholders all of them in the city the environmental I mean, ESSD, that's going to put lights they're going to clean the area and all of that so yeah. And also, we, I, I welcome the fact that now we're not going to be working in the, in the silos because in the city we've got, you know, the, the cameras. Um, we are using Vumacam um, and the province have their own cameras and Vumacam on the side. So we need to integrate everything in one. And the law enforcement, we are partnering with them as well. We've given them, we, we, we've deployed a number of the JMPD officers and the, the province is coming in with the crime, you know, the, the crime prevention wardens and the traffic, the slew, everyone to yeah. really combat this thing. So it's much needed. It was long overdue. We've yeah. been trying to talk to the leadership and like just come together and all of that. But by the way, some of the, I mean, some of the crime wardens, they were trained by the city and then some of the uh, people who are operating these cameras, they were trained by, by us in the IOC because the city has got cameras. Yeah. And then we partnered there with the with the guys from the Fuma camp. So we have a visuals of about plus minus 7,000 plus hours of the city. So we're looking at about 7,500. So with the with the city's one, we can integrate and then we can be very big. So yeah, so it's a it's a good, it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. We, we 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 actually. Yeah, we welcome that. Yeah. Crime in the inner city has got out of control. Um, and together with the Josie My Josie initiative, the Gauteng Provincial Government and the city of Johannesburg, this is a brilliant example of a public-private partnership um, working really well. We have um, Vumacam has densified a network of 240 cameras in the inner city. Um, and 
we, with this new partnership, will be launching a total network of 684 new cameras in the inner city. It allows for our network, as well as the infrastructure that the province and the, um, the city have planted themselves, to be able to be integrated into a single platform um, in the control centers using the technology to be able to dispatch um, the resources efficiently as and when is required. Tonight, will be launching one of the lighting set uh, the legislature. And secondly, of course, is the Ellis Park program because it extends to the Ellis Park uh, present, which I think we have seen already that we have beautified. And over and above that, we are also looking at uh, by law enforcement. And our next stop is to assess the readiness of our um, uh, law enforcement agencies. So you'll see a consistent by law enforcement and crime prevention uh, coordination of all uh, law enforcement agencies in terms of managing the data on cameras so that we can reduce the crime within the inner city. It's only through the district development model, which is partnerships between ourselves, then we can put all our resources into one pot so that we can respond. So between province, national and ourselves, we'll have to make resources available and also attract resources from the private sector to bring back into the revitalization of the inner city. So there's a number of programs that we must still bring, on in, bring in place for us to get this uh, project really, really realized. Crime, law enforcement and the importance of safety being highlighted uh, as part of the movement to make the city safer and more appealing. In addition, the importance of dealing with abandoned and hijacked buildings was also highlighted at today's proceedings. Now, as we know, another fire recently broke out in Johannesburg CBD, that's GP's town, which claimed four lives and left three others injured. This is just a year after the infamous uh, Marshalltown fire that claimed 76 lives last year. Now, this is what uh, both MMC for Public Safety in Ichwaku and Joburg Mayor Dada Morero had to say on the issue of abandoned and hijacked buildings in the city of Johannesburg. On the, on the side of the EMS and public safety, we've been doing the in inspection. So exactly we know which bad buildings, where are they? We the, and then through the office of, of Joshko, they've done some of the social analysis, what, what kind of individuals, what is the social or economic status of those individuals. So um, we've done our stuff and everything. And uh, we, if you remember last year, I went into a building called, you know, the, 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 the Venin Court and the Casamia. Uh, it, it, I went in there, people, they said, look, the building is dirty, there's no electricity and all of that, but we want to go somewhere else, if maybe the city can come in and, 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 and renovate that. What is the problem right now of which the mayor and the premier have been talking about, they're going to give us support on in the city, is to give all the people who are staying in bad buildings alternative accommodation. So once you take those people and put them in an alternative accommodation, renovate those uh, buildings and turn them into low-cost housing and the student housing, then it's fine. Because in all the buildings now that, um, that are about to be uh, you know, abandoned by individuals and all of that, we are tracking them and we're putting security and the JMBD to watch those over that. So what is the problem right now of which the national government have to come to the party is a transitional accommodation of the, of, of among the people who are staying there. Then we, we, we would be fine. We've done the audit, we know which ones are there. I mean, in the place where those, those, that, uh, you know, that, that, that building bent, there are other ones around there. Almost 10 of them, similar. similar. So I even told the, the Premier, Premier, the sooner you give us those transition accommodation, take the people there, take down, you know, if you go to the building, they've got checks. So it's just a transition accommodation. Any evacuation orders from court, we have them. What we want to do is that we evacuate the people, put them somewhere else while you've got uh, renovation happening uh, by the city, by the private sector, coming in individuals who wants to come in and, and invest as well. We have adopted a good strategy on Wednesday. We met as the city with our officials and we are implementing our strategy. And you will see in the next week we'll be starting to implement the strategy towards reclaiming the bad buildings, high-tech buildings, uh, so that we can address that uh, with the speed that is required. So you'll see in the next week the work that we are doing to respond uh, to bad buildings. Yeah. Well, there's a partnership, of course, with uh, the Home Affairs and the police to help us. As you know, that our mandate may not necessarily extend to dealing with that. 
Uh, so we have already extended the invite from Oma first to say in the next week we'll be busy with something. Can you also come on board to help us realize the uh, short-term objectives in as far as the revitalization of the city? I mean, we can safely say this is a very ambitious campaign indeed. I mean, it was echoed by Premier Banyazeli Sufi in his opening. I mean, various issues tabled as requiring attention, including greater visibility of law enforcement to decrease crime, cleaning up the city more regularly, as well as the importance of collaboration, not only between the public and private sectors, but uh, with the residents of Johannesburg as well. We will definitely continue to monitor the work of the initiative and see how things develop as time goes on. On that note, uh, that's how we wrap up today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Simply send us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za or can simply just call us or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. All right, so Rigi Lehole from myself, Tabo Mulukwani, and the rest of the team. Good night, and thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the latest news update with Preeti Gwenya coming right up next. Bye-bye.